Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Got a few things we're going to take a look at this morning. Um, I got a big brand new Fleetwood Discovery up here for an aqua hot service. And I got this Mercedes uh, B-Class over here. I want to take you guys over and kind of show you what's going on with it. Because it came in and the uh, uh, when he's driving down the road, the, the engine was not charging the battery. And then when he was running the generator, the, the inverter converter was just doing some crazy crap. So let's go over here and look at this right quick. So we got the testing on this thing and that's the solenoid. This is, this is the engine battery. This is the house battery. And when they get to driving down the road, this 12 volt supplied to this actuates this relay and binds those two batteries together to, to supply enough power driving down the road. Now that solenoid is clicking, but nothing's happening. So it's bad. So we got in here and got the check in and this inverter converter, Mr. Cody's in here, got this thing tore apart. And you can see where they bury this thing underneath the seat, but there's the inverter converter and buried up underneath the seat of this thing. So we got the seat out. Well, this thing's a problem. So we're gonna change it out with that uh, standalone. Now, the reason we're kind of doing that is he just had a brand new generator put in this thing. And, you know, inverter converters are fine. Nothing wrong with that, but there's one little battery in this thing. Now, typically you're gonna talk about three, four batteries. This thing's only got one battery. So by the time it does anything, that battery's dead. So we're doing away with that. He doesn't want that option anymore. He's got a brand new generator. He said, if I need power, I'll run my generator. Or I'll plug it in on the shore power. There's really no reason for me to do that because we never, he never does any kind of uh, dry camping with that. So we're just gonna do away with that and then uh, get him fixed up the other way. All right, so Brandon and uh, Cousin Gary are in here working on this aqua hot. Now, you can see how buried up in here it is. Now, they did a very nice job in thinking about somebody who had to do some service on that, actually gave us some room to work inside there. So, Brandon and Cousin Gary are over here now. You can see Brandon's over here checking the the uh, electrode distance, doing an adjustment on that. Of course, obviously gonna change out the fuel nozzle on there. And then, of course, there's Cousin Gary this morning. And he's doing a cleaning on this, uh, on this swirler tube that's in here. And then, obviously, also gonna change the uh, the fuel filter that's right there get that done and then we're going to put it all put it all back together and retest so we had a montana fifth wheel that came in that had been down at a uh, big box store we won't mention its name uh for blowout damage now they did a they did a great job on the blowout part they just didn't do the job completely so let me show you what's going on here lewis has got everything ready to be pulled off here but let me show you if you can notice the blowout damage actually damaged that whole bracket across there see how the, it's bowed up right there and so what it's done is it's caused that roller to be in the wrong position and so what it's done is it's tore this floor out so again we've talked about this basket weave material on the bottom of these floors this is this is the wrong way but obviously you can see that thing's angled real bad so they didn't they didn't quite fix the whole problem they fixed the blowout damage but didn't take care of that now unfortunately the bad part for this unit is we've got to pull this whole slide out which is bal cable slide so we've got to pull all this out we've got to get this on the, out of there so we can go in here and fix all that and then while we have it out we're going to wrap that in the middle like you normally see us do okay so we're uh, back here on the montana now you can see obviously we've got the slide out now remember, blowout damage came up here and damaged this and has kicked this all out of whack. So you can see the angle of that now and how bad this is. Uh, let me show you what kind of damage it's done to the floor right here. You can see with that being off, look what it's done to this. Really done a bunch of damage to this floor. 
I mean, we fortunately have caught it in time. It hasn't really gotten into the into the wood, but all that material now has been getting rolled up. You can see where it's been getting all piled up in here, and this is the reason why when the customer brought it in, it was it was it was jerking real bad going in and going out, and it's just again this was just not done the right way. So we're gonna fix all this, get this back straight, and then that floor. We're, you guys have seen us do this in multiple videos. Uh, I've already called down and got the metal, but we're gonna wrap this. We're gonna take this all off, take all this black corrugated crap off here, and then Lewis is gonna wrap all this in metal, seal it. This thing will be better than new. Okay, doing a seal tech on an Avenger bumper pull. Now you can see how bad this thing's leaking. It's leaking there, it's leaking there, leaking all the way around there. All the fixtures are leaking. Yeah, wind is leaking. So he's got a list of stuff wrong with this and it looks like it looks like it's leaking pretty bad here. Now we talked about this in the past, those little holes where they where they uh, mount the awning. That's what's causing that. Compartment leaking right there. So yeah, this one's gonna have to have a bunch of work done on it. Okay, so we're back here on this Avenger this morning and I wanted to kind of show you guys something. Now, the customer had stated that there was ceiling panel up in here that had had some water in here. And so we've got the seal tech machine running in here now. But look at that. The whole roof membrane has let loose on this thing. Now, the other thing that concerns me, and I, it's hard to tell from this video, this whole wall panel right here, this whole wall panel right here has, is loose. Now, obviously, I don't think, I mean, this is bad. I don't think the water's getting in right there, but the seal has obviously got a problem. The other issue is, it looks like this thing had a turnabond tape down it at some point. Now the turnabond tape's gone. These are not sealed. But see, this is all failures. This is failure in the ceiling. So this thing's probably had water pooling in here and has been getting back in here because look at that whole roof. Everything's let loose in here. So, you know, obviously got a lot of problems going on here. Um, here's another good point. Look at here. So this is all failures. So not only do we have a problem here, and I don't know, I, if I okay, maybe you can see it right there, kind of bulging. The whole panel's bulging out. So multiple problems going on here, along with, you know, obviously everything in the front is not seal taken right. So we're gonna have to dig into this just a little bit more. Okay, one other thing that I wanna kind of show you guys right here. See, I'm gonna show you, cause it gets worse as it goes down through here. But look at this, this is all failure in the ceiling. This thing's had water in it to the point, I could feel air actually blowing through here. This has failed to the point that look at this. Now what happens is, what's gonna happen here is as this thing drives down the road, all of this, all of this air that's coming across the top of this is, is pulling on this roof. And eventually because the glue has let go here, eventually what's gonna happen is it's gonna tear it out of here and this thing's gonna this thing's gonna blow apart. So you can see how bad somebody's been up here doing some sealant work, and they hadn't done real hasn't been a real good sealant job. But this thing, the whole this whole roof, everything up there, you see that cover we've got off there is moving. I mean, this whole roof has let loose because it's had water intrusion in here. Now again, I can feel air blowing through this crack. So if the air's coming out of here, this roof, this roof has failed. So we got multiple problems along with here and here. And so I'm gonna have to have a long conversation with this customer. Well, Tori and I are back from Dayton. We got that. We got that sign face. There was actually three of them. We got them put in there. So that's all done. So McCartney family practice out there in Dayton, Tennessee. There you go. Need to see a chiropractor. That's the place to go. 
So this Montana, while I was gone, uh, the boys actually got the floor all done and it's back in the camper. So Lewis is just working on trying to get the, trying to get the trims and all cleaned up and then uh, just doing the fascia and you gotta get all that put back in. But that turned out good, putting that metal on the bottom of that. So anyways, I got that going. I got a couple other things I'm gonna take you in here and show you. Okay, so we had this little outback came in that had some roof problems. Let me take you up here and show you what's going on. So the bathroom vent was completely broke out of this thing. But he also wanted us to look at the roof and look at all that ceiling. Look how failed that is. Um, air, the refrigerator vents real bad. Let's take a look up here on the front. See how all that's failing real bad right through there? All that's failing. All that's failing. I mean, this thing's really in just a, in a bad deal right here. So all the ceiling has just, just started coming apart. Look at it down here. Now, this is one thing I hate about these roofs. This is a piece of metal that they've used to wrap this corner right here. And of course this is plywood. And they take this piece of metal and wrap that. Well, the issue is they put very few staples in this thing. When we staple these up here, when we do them, we staple probably every inch. I mean, I know I go over overboard on staples, but that don't happen when we do our roofs. The other thing is, look at this. That is the staple coming out. The metal is right here. The staple's way over here. You gotta staple them on the edge like that and then tape all this. And if you do that, that's not gonna work itself out. So that right there is a roof membrane failure that's in the works. So of course, TPO or uh, EPDM roofing, this is, a, this is a problem. So they've done that all the way down this side and all the way down that side, wrapped it with that metal. And that's a fine way to do it. But again, staples are gonna start working themselves loose. Look here, there's another one. See that staple's starting to push through. And eventually, eventually this roof's gonna fail. Now there's another one. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a bad deal because there's a staple there. We've got one right there, but that's about 10 inches apart. And again, it's not on the seam. So, you know, this is stuff that we see that is problematic. Now the back don't look, it, it doesn't look as bad, but it definitely has got some failure in here. And somebody, somebody tried, but you know, just didn't do a very good job of sealing this up. And it's just, it's just poor at best. So gonna have to have a conversation with this customer and get him a call and kind of show him what's going on. But I want to show you guys some of this up here. Well, good morning, welcome back. It's Friday, getting towards the end of the week here. We've had some things going on and you guys saw me out there working on that sign for uh, McCartney family. So we got that all done. Uh, had this horse trailer come in. Uh, they put a uh, awning fabric on that. And then uh, we've got a latch on the arm that's got a problem. So we're going to wait on those to show up. Those old 8,500 um, Dometic parts are just getting tough to find anymore. It's, you know, I do a little modification to make the, make the latch work. But we're going to get it. Should have some parts here later today. Um, so we'll be working on that. We've got a, uh, we've got a mallard that came in and customer was complaining that the slide wasn't running in and out correctly. Now, when we got up there and got the look and he hasn't been cleaning the leaves off the top of the slide. So it was like packed with leaves and pine needles and all kinds of stuff. And it was, you know, getting jammed up inside the, inside the slide when it was going in there. So, so that was kind of. You know, gonna have to have a conversation with him about that. And obviously, maybe look at putting a slide out topper on there because he doesn't have a slide out topper on there. So that's the way it goes. Just, you know, sometimes you gotta talk about those campers and try to educate the customers as, as much as we can. Now, this, uh, this Avenger right there that you guys saw us talking about on that one um, with the roof and all that. So, you know, my, the customer was asking me, you know, which which camper's better, metal-sided camper or phylon-sided camper? You know, at least with a at least with a phylon-sided camper, if it starts leaking, you're gonna start getting that D lamb. You know, metal camper just hides so much so much stuff behind that metal. You know, the wood the wood structure and you know is all hidden behind there. So if you've got a leak, you don't even know it, and that thing. 
that thing's that thing's obviously got problems so they're going to be looking at doing something else they told us just to stop where we're at on that and and they're going to talk about doing something different maybe maybe trading or something so she was going to let me know on monday but anyways that's the way it goes um got quite a bit coming in next week i've got a big prevost bus coming in next week for basement air repair and then i had a gentleman contact me out of atlanta he's got a basement air out of a prevost bus that he's going to be bringing in to uh have us work on but anyways thanks to everybody for all the great comments you gave me on last week's video i really appreciate the encouragement i appreciate everybody kind of commenting and you know they're kind of seeing the same thing we're seeing in this industry and you know guys i started this channel a year ago just to you know not really showcase what 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 kind of work we do but just to kind of show you what we deal with and you know what's the uh what's the everyday life of an rv technician and this is what i want to show you guys and you know i kind of got doing this i've been watching a guy on uh youtube called the millennial farmer you guys can go on there and check his channel out congratulations to, to zach at the millennial farmer by the way uh, just reached a million subscribers uh he's been doing this since 2016 so i'd been watching him kind of seeing the showcase of what he does and, and it kind of was it, you know it was interesting to me about farm life and so i wanted to kind of start doing the same thing here at shelburne rv and kind of showing you guys what we deal with in the rv industry what we do what we do every day thanks for everybody who subscribed you you've been with us now a year and you've kind of seen you know <laughs> The, the, the troubles that we deal with with some of these RVs and you know what the industry actually is and I appreciate everybody everybody watching but uh, you know shout out to Mr. Zach Johnson at uh, the Millennial Farmer congratulations on your million, million million subscribers who knows where we'll be in that amount of time maybe we'll have a million subscribers one day I don't know you know I, I didn't do it for the subscribers I just did it to kind of show what we do every day and you guys are getting to see it firsthand so there you go um the other thing we got going on in here is we got this outback that's got a roof reseal the fixtures and all and it's got a skylight we talked about that yesterday on that other video we did about showing the sealant and some of the stuff that was failing so uh the montana with the floor lewis is pretty much getting this one finished up so i'll show you that as we get it kind of done but he's just working on getting the cable slide and some of the fascia done but uh we'll show you that here in just a couple minutes well, I got to go down here to the front office. I just got told that I got a delivery from one of the big trucking companies. We, uh, this old uh, Airstream that you guys have seen us working on here, doing that bathroom restoration. Um, about a month ago, we ordered a, uh, a a shower surround and a and a bathtub for that, or shower tub for that, and and it sh and it showed up. And of course, it looked like the guys on the dock used it as a ramming rod, so they just destroyed the daggum thing. So I had to refuse it and send it back, which now has put me way behind on doing this uh, doing this uh, restoration on this tub. So they're telling me that the new one has just showed up, so I'm going to go down here. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm going to hope that uh, they haven't destroyed this one, but I'm going to go down here now and see what's going on, and we'll check this out. Well, I jinxed myself. The box came out of the truck, and look phenomenal and then we got got in there and got the uh got it opened up one of the corners was damaged on it so there's another there's three weeks down waiting on a shower surround so yeah i guess i should have kept my mouth shut and just just opened it up maybe maybe we maybe we'd have been good i don't know it's just you know so disappointing this is what we deal with and trying to get this in and i need that job i literally need that work right now and you know, this guy wants his old Airstream back, and then here we are, you know, second one. So, and of course, the shower pan was in the box with the shower surround, and they won't let me have the shower pan. If I had the shower pan, I could at least get the shower pan in, get it all plumbed, have it ready for the surround whenever the surround can get here without being damaged, but they won't let me have the pan because it's all as one package. So, you know, I, this is what we're dealing with. So anyways... There you go. Another another one thanks to the trucking company. So Lewis is pretty much finished up here in this Montana. Now, one of the challenging issues in here sometimes on these uh, doing these facial jobs is you can see where we had to put staples and stuff back in there. You know, trying to match that sometimes is, is, is challenging. Um, you know, and 
and we all played with these as a kid, but that's the trick some days. Uh, those are not quite as dark as I want it to be, so I had to tweak on that a little bit, but you know, that's an old RVers trick. You just have the uh, box of Crayola crayons stuffed in your toolbox somewhere because eventually you're going to use them for that. All right, so the boys have been up here working on this outback, and see they've got everything pretty well sealed up now. Now, remember when you saw it the other day, we had a broke skylight, so the new skylight's in and sealed. They've got all the covers flipped up because they went around and fixed all this stuff. It took a little bit to get this done, but this is a whole lot nicer than what it was. It's, it's ready to go. Well, I just had my basement air from Atlanta come up out of the Prevost bus. Now this gentleman uh, went ahead and pulled it out himself uh, and then brought it to it because he was just around the corner. And of course, same one that's in the Alpha guys. Um, but again, I have a Prevost bus uh, and we have done a little bit of diag on it. Now, you can see right here, he actually tried putting a hard start kit on it about a year ago but it does have a bad compressor one. Uh, it is pulling about 53 amps on startup. So we're gonna, we're gonna get, get into that. I actually have a brand new GMCC compressor to go back in that. So that'll get that fixed up. So we're gonna start with that next week. And then I do have another Prevost bus coming in next week for repair. So we're gonna, we're gonna get that in here and get looking on that. But I gotta run down here um that horse trailer you saw us looking at with the new awning fabric and the the arm locks we actually got that fixed so that's ready to head down the hill so i'm gonna go ahead and while cousin gary's busy doing some other stuff i'm gonna get it get it hooked up and hauled down there all righty well that's gonna finish us up here this week at shelburne rv appreciate everybody watching and thanks for all the comments from last week's video tune in next week got some prevost uh coaches coming in with some basement airs and as always this video is what guys there you go take care